ankle fractures and the ankle examination. The ankle joint is a synovial joint located at the lower limb at the junction of the lower leg and foot. This educational video will provide a brief outline of the anatomy of the ankle joint, fractures which may occur through injury, and conclude with the principles of the ankle examination. Functionally, the ankle is a hinged type joint permitting dorsiflexion and plantiflexion of the foot. Eversion and inversion are produced at other joints of the foot, such as the subtalar joint. Four bones provide the framework for the ankle, the tibia and fibula of the lower leg, and two tarsal bones, the talus, and to a lesser extent, the calcaneus. The ankle joint proper is an articulation of an arch-shaped chamber or mortise formed medially and superiorly by the tibia in the form of the medial malleolus and tibial plafond, and laterally by the fibula in the form of the lateral malleolus. The syndesmosis of fibrous membrane connects the tibia to the fibula to complete the mortise, which then articulates with the talus. Articular cartilage covers all these joint surfaces. Ligaments surrounding the ankle joint play an important role in providing stability. On the medial side, the medial ligament is made up of four separate ligaments which fan out from the malleolus attaching to the talus, calcaneus and navicular bones. The primary action of the medial ligament is to resist over eversion of the foot. The lateral ligaments originate from the lateral malleolus. It resists over inversion of the foot and is comprised of three distinct and separate ligaments, the anterior talofibular ligament, the posterior talofibular ligament, and the calcaneofibular ligament. When dealing with the injury to the ankle joint, a clinician must bear in mind that the fractures of the ankle may occur in association with ligament damage, which would not show up on an x-ray. The Weber classification is a method of describing ankle fractures based on the level of the fracture in the distal fibula. It has three categories. Type A is where the fracture of the lateral malleolus is distal to the syndesmosis, usually caused by inversion. Type B is a fracture of the fibula at the level of the syndesmosis and is usually caused by eversion. Type C, like type B, is also caused by eversion, however the fracture of the fibula is proximal to the syndesmosis. The talus is most commonly fractured by two methods. The first is hyperdorsiflexion, where the neck of the talus is forced against the tibia and fractures. The Hawkins classification is used based on the degree of displacement. With these fractures, there is a high risk of avascular necrosis. The second is jumping from a height, where the body is fractured as the talus transmits the force from the foot to the lower limb bones. Calcaneal fractures are classified based on involvement of the subtalar joint. Intraarticular fractures are more common and involve the posterior talar articular facet of the calcaneus. Two radiological angles are used to identify calcaneal fractures, when Poller's angle is less than 20 degrees and when the angle of Gasson is greater than 130 degrees. Forced inversion and eversion causing ankle fractures are common in sports like squash. <laughs> A good prognosis relies on early identification and treatment, which requires a sound approach to the examination of a suspected ankle fracture. The clinical assessment. Your assessment begins as your patient enters the room, paying special attention to their gait, level of discomfort, ability to bear weight, and the use of walking aids. As is the case with any medical inquiry, a thorough history is required before moving on to the examination. Salient features to be addressed include the mechanism and mode of injury, the direction of the ankle roll, and the immediate effects, such as a pop or any extreme pain. It is also worthwhile investigating previous similar episodes or potentiating factors such as ligamentous laxity. Moving on to the examination, we follow the three classic tenets of musculoskeletal assessment, namely look, feel, and move. Look. First with the patient standing, inspect the foot from all angles, looking specifically for any obvious deformities such as swelling, bruising, wounds, or open fractures. Make note of other irregularities such as scars, pes planus, and pes cavus. Inspection is then concluded with the patient seated. Feel. Begin by excluding neurovascular compromise, as is the case with any suspected fracture or dislocation. We feel for the dorsalis pedis pulse and also assess sensory function of the foot. We palpate the bony structures, feeling for any deformities, tenderness, or overlying soft tissue swelling. 
we're beginning at the medial malleolus and then down the fibula to the lateral malleolus. We then palpate the joint line, feeling for any tenderness and crepitus. And we conclude by palpating the syndesmosis. Pressure testing over ligaments is done to exclude tears or severe sprains and include the anterior talofibula, calcanofibula, and the posterior talofibula ligament. Move. Begin with a formal assessment of gait, noting whether the patient can bear weight or not. A conservative diagnosis of an ankle fracture can now be made in keeping with the Ottawa rules, indicating the need for an x-ray for definitive diagnosis. These rules include pain in either malleolar zone, an inability to bear weight, or pain in the distal 6 cm of the tibia or fibula. The purpose of these rules is to avoid unnecessary investigations, however function merely as a guideline and should not replace sound clinical suspicion. If a fracture is not suspected, you can move on to range of motion testing. Both active and passive motion can be assessed. For the sake of examination, we will just be testing passive motion. Begin with plantar and dorsiflexion testing of the true ankle joint. And inversion and eversion at the subtalar joint. A decrease in range of motion could be indicative of a dislocation, synovial effusion, or severe pain. Stability testing of the ligaments should not be performed in the acute setting as to avoid exacerbation of the injury and pain to the patient. However, a long-term complication of fractures and sprains include instability, which can be tested as follows. Begin with the anterior drawer test, noting any abnormal displacement or sulcus sign on either side of the foot. A tailor tilt test can be performed, testing stressed eversion and inversion at the joint. The presence of instability warrants a referral to a physiotherapist or biokinetist for strengthening exercises. In suspected Achilles tendon injury, which may present similarly to a fracture, a Thompson test will rule out a tear or rupture. An X-ray of the injured ankle provides a definitive diagnosis of an ankle fracture as well as its severity. These were discussed earlier with the Weber classification. In conclusion, ankle fractures are a common occurrence and need to be identified and managed accordingly. Be sure to also revise the treatment of ankle fractures.